everyone, and welcome to today's episode of Dirty Laundry, where I let you into my deck building process and how I decide what to include and what not to include when I'm testing a new deck concept. When I looked at the comments for a lot of the videos and on Reddit, a lot of the comments there, people overwhelmingly said that the content that they wanted to see was my deck building process and exactly how I decide to build my decks so that's what you guys are going to get I'm going to do a series of these short videos just kind of going over how I build a deck to test and what my process is so today we're going to start with a discussion of sync which is the data and destiny NBN identity that's 4015 it has a one click to flip the identity on the one side it says that the runner pays one more credit when spending a click to remove a tag unless they're using a card ability and on the other side, it says that you may pay two fewer credits when spending a click to trash a resource. So this is a pretty potent ability, and uh, it's one of the ones that's the most interesting to me from the new Data and Destiny data pack. So when I looked at this, uh, this identity, the first thing I think is tag punishment. We want a deck that's going to apply tags and tags that the runner is still going to want to clear, but we want to make it really taxing to get rid of those tags. So with that in mind, let's kind of start with the ice instead of the assets. So how can we give people tags easily? I would say that one of the key includes in a deck like this is going to be at least two Gutenberg. So let's start there. Gutenberg being the incredibly inexpensive two cost sentry that's strength three with the trace seven to give the runner a tag. Uh, it goes up to six strength when it's on R&D. Uh, I find unless somebody has a David in play, this almost never gets broken. If it's on R&D, people almost always float the tag and then plan to clear it later, which is fantastic because it's going to cost them three credits to get rid of it. So let's start with two Gutenbergs. So what else can we use to kind of give people tags that are going to be hard to clear? We want them to be very hard to clear, or maybe even impossible to clear in a single turn so that we can use the flip side identity to get rid of things like Katie Jones and other important resources that runners depend on like wild side, pancakes, etc. Maybe professional contacts. So I would say we definitely... No, I don't think we want News Hound because I don't think we're going to have... Uh room for current in a 40 card deck. Um, what else can we do? I don't think we want Toll Booth. Toll Booth is going to be a little expensive for a small deck. Oh, Turnpike. Turnpike is what we want. So Turnpike is also a cost 2 Tracer Ice, and it's only strength 3, so it is within Mimic range, but it functions kind of like a pop-up in that they're always going to lose one credit when they encounter it, and in the early game when they don't have a Sentry Breaker, it's Trace 5, and if they don't break it, they stick a tag. Let's start with two of those there. I think that's pretty good. Um, generally speaking, in any kind of uh, tag-based or uh, short, small deck, especially in NBN, I try to include three wraparounds just for gear check. It can eat up David counters if they're not running a Fractor. And generally speaking, it's something that you can rush agendas behind for very inexpensive. All right, so right now we've currently got seven pieces of ice. Uh, we've only got three that end the run, and we have two Gutenberg, two Turnpikes, which are both trace pieces of ice. So if you want to talk about an ice that's great for sticking tags that they have to deal with, I would say we need three Data Ravens. Uh, Data Raven is a really strong piece of ice in sync, because if you put it somewhere where they're going to have to run, my favorite play is to put a Data Raven on my scoring server in sync so that they have to take that tag to get what they want. And if, you, if you're up against what you know is a medium-based deck, putting it R, against R&D also works. If you're up against Criminal, putting a Data Raven on HQ to make it so that they have three tags to clear after they account siphon, it's, it's a pretty big deal. So let's back away from the ice for a second. I don't think we necessarily need, need more than this in a rush-based deck, but we'll come back to it. Okay, so let's go to agendas. When I think about a deck like this, obviously we want three Astros so that we have our secondary uh, rush opportunity. I don't think we want breaking news because I don't think we're going to be able to keep the two tags or do anything with the two tags, and we want 
permanent instances of tags, not the temporary tags. Um, hmm. If we're going to do tags, I think we should have three project Beal. That way we can include psychographics so that if they do decide to just say screw it and flow tags or they put down a, a paparazzi or they put down plascretes, you could still leverage those uncleared tags into some sort of victory condition. Uh, I think we want quanta predictive model, especially if we're running data raven. One of the most lulzy things to come out of data and destiny is the fact that if you put this behind a data raven, or if they hit a data raven going into R and D and then hit this, they score this for you, which is just tremendous. So let's start with two. Those can be our um, our two one pointers. All right, or for now, I don't think we want NAPDs in this deck. I don't think. I don't think that's a good fit. What else can we get? You know, maybe an Explode Palooza. It's a 4-2. Uh, it can give us that doubles as an Econ card. We'll put in one. And then I think to close this out, for this deck, we should do Too Good to Be True. That's the 3-1 agenda that uh, if the runner accesses TGTBT, you give the runner one tag. I've started including this in a lot of my decks because people are running a lot of film critic. So what comes as a side effect of that is if they do a big dig or if they hit something in archives and there's multiple agendas in archives, let's say, and they have the Astro and the TGBT, they now have to make the choice between putting the too good to be true on the film critic and then uh, to avoid the tag and then scoring the Astro, which could open them up for mid-seasons. Or if they put the Astro on there, they take the tag. So it kind of puts them into an interesting situation where they kind of get screwed. Also, one of the things that I found is by having too good to be true in your deck, you end up having this weird situation where people will instinctively film critic the first agenda they see. So if they hit the Astro first, they'll film critic it, and then they don't have the ability to avoid the tag from too good to be true. So that's the 18 agenda points that we need for this deck. Let's go ahead and look at assets. So I think a lot of the more expensive assets are not gonna be good. I don't think we want asset-based economy. I think we're gonna really need to double down on just getting to either rush out the win or do tag punishment. So we wanna kind of double down on draw. Three Jackson Howards. Hmm, what's our auxiliary gonna draw gonna be? I don't think we want daily business show because it, it costs us money to res and we have to dedicate ice to protecting it. I think we actually want Lily Lockwell because Lily Lockwell gives you that burst ability to draw up key pieces of a combo. So let's put two of those in there. The reason I'm putting two and not three is it does cost us money and it isn't the world's best effect though when it is useful to remove the tag and search for an operation like Scorched Earth or uh, Traffic Accident, it's going to be useful. And people aren't going to want to trash it before you've resed it, so it's pretty good. And after you've resed it, it's kind of no point for them to trash it. So I definitely think we want News Teams. News Team is the zero calls, zero to trash ambush that works from anywhere that the runner either has to pick two tags or take it as a negative point agenda. We're running extremely ice light. So I think we want two of these because it slows them down and keeps them from getting to seven points. And um, you can use them to keep uh, archives a little safer. So let's do two of those. Actually, you know what? We're only in a 44 card deck. I think we only need two Jackson Howards. I think I'd rather have three news teams in this deck. I don't actually think we need any... Oh, what am, what am I saying? Of course we need more assets. Do you know what we need? We need snares. Snares are going to be absolutely critical to a build like this because it gives them that extra tag that they weren't expecting when they run. Two snares, definitely, so that you can get in there and really give them that extra tag that they didn't count on having the extra click to clear after they get through the data raven and after you know they dig and maybe hit a tgbt and a snare or you know some combination you have to keep in mind that win or lose in a deck like this the game is going to go incredibly incredibly fast
So we have Snares, News Teams, Lily Lockwell, Jackson Howard. So let's move on to Operations. Let's go ahead and get the neutrals in there. So I think we definitely, well, we obviously are going to want to hedge funds. We definitely want Sweeps Week just for our quick and easy money. I don't think we want all seeing eye because we already have something that fills that role. I think we want to fill up the rest of our influence with some scorched earth. So do we have Wayland in here? We need to get Wayland in here. Get rid of everything else. Where's scorched earth? Uh, yeah, I think two is the right number. We'll see if we need more because um, we might not be able to consistently stick two tags for traffic accident, but let's start with three traffic accidents and two scorched earth just so we can start with this package and see if we need to adjust it to being more scorched earth, less traffic accident. It's important to note that when you're playing against Anarch especially with a deck like this, if you have a traffic accident and a scorched earth in your hand, you want to open with the traffic accident because it hits less cards. So if they are holding an I've had worse, if you manage to miss it on the traffic accident, reducing them to three cards, then the Scorched Earth is definitely going to, you know, is guaranteed to kill them because you have to have at least four cards in your hand when an I've had worse is triggered by Scorched Earth in order to survive. So if you have these two and you're using one and one to try to do your kill combo, then you need to make sure that you do the traffic accident first and hope to whiff the I've had worse and then follow it with the Scorched Earth, not the other way around. So we're at 41 cards. We have three cards left. Um, we're a little money light, so what do we what do we do to close out our money? I don't think we're likely to get into range for restructure all that often. What else can we do to give us a little bit of extra money? Hmm. Oh, a copy of midseason would probably be good. So mid-season is our ace in the hole to really land the traffic accident and just start trashing stuff in the back line. If it comes up, it comes up. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I think we want a copy of Psychographics just to be able to have that secondary closing out the game condition. And hmm, last bit of money. Hmm. Maybe, maybe instead of mid seasons, maybe we cut mid seasons. We just count on getting tags the normal way. Go down to two news teams. Now the real question for me in situations like this is: Is, is this a job for Melange Mining Corp, or is it a job for Restructure? question is, is do I think that they're going to run everything that I put down? I think I want Melange Mining Corp because I think if I'm running Data Ravens on the remote, they're not going to run everything that I put down in that remote, especially early on in the game when it's going to really set them back. So I think we want two Melange Mining Corps and then I actually do think that we want to put the mid-season replacement back in the deck just as an alternate win condition. So I think we'll call this the triple play. Uh, kind of thought about that before because this has really three ways to win. We can psycho out something, we can meet damage, or we can just rush using fear and gear check to just score the old-fashioned way. And uh, yeah, an Explode Palooza also definitely feeds into mid-season, so that's probably a good call. So that's basically the deck. Um, we've got 44 cards, 10 pieces of ice, which is going to be light. You're going to have to pl play smart. Um, the second a melange goes down, use it as much as you can. Um, snares. Yeah, I think this is a good start to a sync deck that's efficient, can rush out, has the money to do what it wants to do, and has the draw to get to its combo pieces. All right, well, this has been the first episode of Dirty Laundry where I've just kind of done the side-by-side. -side. I hope you guys enjoy.
Uh, if you guys want to see more of this content, please put comments down below and let me know how you'd like me to improve this segment or uh, maybe identities that you'd like to see me do deck builds for. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch you guys next time.